So let's give our best here. Come on, Shaylin. That's right. Stand to your feet. Make some noise for Jay. Jay Vasquez. Yeah. You can hide. Come on, Sam, man. How you doing? You Amen. Hey, slow. well, we don't have a uh, ready or not. That was good. Uh, AG has changed a lot. Um, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, I don't have a lot of time. Only got 10 minutes, but I want to give uh, just honor where honor is due. Uh, to the leadership of CMN, thank you so much for pouring in the church planners. When all we had was a why, you gave us the what, where, when, and how. And we appreciate that so much. Thank you for finishing the sentence. Come on, can we honor them really quickly? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, it was a Sunday uh, after church when our children's pastor, a.k.a. my mom, <laughs> she was our children's pastor for two years until I fired her. I'm not, I'm just kidding. I didn't fire her. She quit. Um, and so she came over to me and, uh, and she handed me, it's all true stories. She came over and she handed me a 1,000-piece a Star Wars puzzle. And uh, I said, what, what, what is this? Why are you giving to me? She said, somebody donated this to the children's ministry because as we all know, uh, eight-year-olds are really great at three things, uh, uh, patience, uh, sitting down, and reconstruction. And so, you know, and so she said, I don't think they can use it. I said, well, we'll take it home. It was already opened. My wife and I were looking for a hobby to add on to our other hobby. You know what I'm talking about. And so we found another hobby and we spent the puzzle. The puzzle was going to be the hobby. Now we knew it was going to be precarious when we started it because it was open. So there was a chance that there weren't going to be all the pieces in the box, but we went ahead and did it anyway. It took us two months to put this uh, puzzle together. And with every piece that we added, we felt a little bit more and more confident. We felt like God was trying to give us a message, you know, because how preachers are always looking into spiritualized things. And, and I was like, it was open, but it was completed. I don't know. And, and so, and so we, we were really excited about that until the last day. We were almost done with the puzzle. It was the last day. I brought a picture of the puzzle. Here's the puzzle. It was the last day of the puzzle. Can you see it? Yoda's left foot. We had 999 pieces, and there was one piece that was not there. This was so frustrating for me. You don't understand, I got OCD. Obsessive, compulsive, done. If it's not done, I gotta finish it. And I was so mad, and so I grabbed this. It's actually our Vasquez family motto. Vasquez has always finished what they started. Like, I'm that big on finishing. So I take the puzzle, I can't even be able to look at it, and I go to throw it in the trash, and I'm on the way to throw it in the trash, I feel something tell me, don't do it, keep it. And I said, why would I keep something that will never be finished? And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me, because when you chose to build the church, you were choosing to build something that will never be finished. And I want to let you know that today, that, that picture, that, that puzzle cannot be found in the trash. It's actually framed in my office as a reminder that my peace is not dependent on my pieces. I might not have everything, but I don't need everything to be able to complete the plan that God has over my life. And I just came to encourage somebody. I came to talk to a church planner today, a pastor today, who is on the way to the trash with the vision that God gave you because you feel like what's in your hand doesn't match the picture on the box. He knew what he was giving it to you when he gave it to you. So if you're here today and you've ever told yourself this sentence, I'm missing a piece, that's what I want to talk to you about today. I'm missing a piece. I'm missing a piece. We've got a slide for it. They'll put it on. There it is. I'm missing a piece. Uh, maybe you've told yourself, my church is missing a piece. Make some noise if you've ever had that sentence. My church is, if I only had the, the creative piece, if I only had the permanent building piece, if I only had the money piece, if I only had the worship piece, come on. We didn't have a piano player for a year and a half at our church. Do you know what it's like to not have a piano player for a year and a half? You know what that means? That means I went a year and a half without being able to do an altar call. <laughs> a year and a half, I was like, don't come. Just God will meet you where you are. Amen. <laughs> Just he'll, he'll touch you right there. I couldn't do it. I was so mad, man. I didn't have it. I remember when my son came into the office because he was a big Star Wars fan. And when he saw the puzzle, he was so pumped, man. He was like, Dad, this is awesome. I was like, shame. Don't look. Vasquez has always finished what they started and I couldn't, you know. And he was like, no, dude. He was like, this is awesome. You know why he thought it was awesome? 
because he couldn't see the one piece that was missing. He looked at the 999 that had been found. God told me to tell somebody today, don't focus on the one that's not there. Focus on the 999 that are there. Don't let the people you don't have take away focus from the people you do have. Don't let the people who left steal your joy from the people who decided to stay when everyone else was gone. He knew what he was giving it to you when he gave it to you. You got what you need. Black people, white people, stop wishing you had more black people. Spanish people, stop wishing you had more white people. God who knew when God gave you the box, he knew what he put in it when he gave it to you. When he gave it to you, when he gave it to you. It turns out my, my church was missing a piece because it turns out my character was missing a piece. I, I, I can't promise you that God will ever deliver what you're missing externally. But I can promise when he does not deliver external you cannot have currently, it's because he's trying to develop what you do not currently possess internally. Internally. One of the biggest mistakes you can ever make when planning a church is expecting your church to grow. We talk about, somebody laughs because they know, we, we talk about managing expectations as a church planner. I don't believe in managing expectations. I believe in clarifying expectations. Don't expect your church. I, don't exp I used to expect my church to grow, and then it didn't, and it just messed me up. I don't expect my church to grow. I pray for my church to grow. The only thing I expect God to grow is me. Because I'm the only, that's the only growth I have control over. That's the only growth that I can do. I don't expect people in my seats. I pray for people in my seats. I expect more patience in my soul. That's what I'm expecting. God to change me, transform me, build me. My character is missing a piece. And he was using the frustration of the unfinished to continue forming my soul to continue forming my gifts, to continue forming my patience and my understanding and everything that I could see. And I know this might sound a little uh, kind of just not theologically correct, but I wanted to tell you today the reason why you're here, the reason why CMN is such an important partner, the reason why you have to answer the call of God is because it's not just your church that's missing a piece. And it's not just your character that's missing a piece, but God is missing a piece. God is missing a piece. Can we show that picture one more time? That, that, that Yoda picture, 999 pieces, and it was still missing one. Don't tell me there's too many churches in your city. There can be 999 churches in your city, and your city will still be missing a church because your city is missing you. There is a hole in San Antonio. I don't care how many churches are in San Antonio. There's a hole in Dallas. I don't care how many great churches like this one that are already here in Dallas. There's a hole that only you can fit because I don't know if you saw where I was going. I know your church is missing a piece. I know that your character is missing a piece. But you have to answer the call because God's missing a piece and you are the missing piece. There is nothing more unique than a puzzle piece. So stop comparing yourself to someone else. They're not cut the way you were cut. They're not shaped the way you were shaped. They can't fit the holes that only you can fit. Don't compare. Don't complain that you don't have the gifts of Stephen Furtick. Stephen Furtick's already got his place. T.D. Jakes already got his place. With all of them in their place, we're still missing you. We still need you. There's something you got that they don't got that they can't fill. And only you got it. So what if you don't have what they don't have? They might not have, you might not have their skill set, but they don't have your story. You might not have their presence, but they don't have your pain. You might not have the money that they have in their account, but we're both preaching the same message from the same pulpit. Jesus Christ died, buried, resurrected in heaven and coming back. And that's the only thing you need. I just want to let you know right now, don't you compare. They don't have what you have. Oh yeah, Latinos, ellos no tienen tu idioma. Ellos no tienen tu cultura. Ellos no tienen tu poder. Ellos no tienen tu comida. Ellos no tienen. Well, that's not true. They kind of got your food. They took that, especially in Texas, but... Don't be ashamed. Don't wish you didn't have your accent. Your accent is the very thing that this city is missing because there's 100 million people in this country with an accent looking for a pastor with an accent. Don't wish your skin was lighter. Don't wish you were taller. Don't wish you could preach better. They need what you got. 
what you got. That's why your worship is so important to God because nobody can worship like you can worship. Nobody can praise like you can praise. Matter of fact, I dare you to stand on your feet right now and give God a praise that only you can give, a worship that only you can give with your pain and your story and your history and everything you've been through. Can't nobody say hallelujah like you say hallelujah. Can't nobody say glory a Dios como tú dices glory a Dios. Nobody can call down God's presence like you call God God's presence. There's nobody like you on this earth today, yesterday, or tomorrow.